videos I made, the less of a shit I get. Hello, uh, this is Sebastian from... Hello and welcome to a brand new studio vlog. In this video, I do about two weeks worth of work. So a lot of designing new products for my shop as well as a lot of painting. If you're looking for a vlog with a lot of time lapse art making sequences, this is the video for you. Um, and yeah, I like this video. I hope you like it too. And I'll see you in the next clip. Bye. My work is good and honest, yet even with all the effort, it seems like the throat's still slipping away. At least I can come back here. I actually wrote notes about what I want to talk about because normally when I film I just turn on the camera and I just start blabbing and then future me has to sit through like 20 minutes of unedited blah 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 and it just like takes ages to edit so I'm gonna try this new thing where before I turn on the camera I type out a few key points of what I want to convey to you all um, just to save me a lot of editing time we'll see if it actually works because I love to chat. Today is Monday so I have a lot of stuff planned for this week. Because I want my shop update to happen in October I have a lot of things to order and design in advance just so I can order them and then wait for them to come because it typically takes like two plus weeks for some things to arrive. I need to do a lot of shop design prep. I want to design my risograph print, which is really exciting because I've never made anything Riza before and I, I love risograph. I'm gonna work on some Halloween sticker designs. I also wanna make a keychain design. Uh, like I mentioned in my last update, I'm really trying to move towards more manufactured goods for this update, just because I need to give my wrist a break um, from doing all my handmade stuff. I also need to work on my Patreon print because October is around the corner for some reason. I don't know how that happened so quickly. I feel like it just became September, but October is on the corner, so I have to design the Patreon print for October. I want to get all the design work done now just so I'm not too stressed out during the month of October because 
Inktober is coming up and I want to make sure there's time in Inktober to experiment and just like really get involved because I feel like last year I was really just starting out in my art Instagram social media career like I was starting to post more yeah so I'm a little nervous about Inktober actually um, just because I really hope I don't want myself to burn out um, I saw the FedEx car just drive away and it left this enormous box on my doorstep and I'm kind of confused because I didn't order that many things, but I guess let's open it. Oh my gosh, the thank you card came out really good though. Great, great. But I feel like there's just too many of them. I was so sure that they made a mistake and sent me too many, but this is indeed the amount I ordered. I guess like, I've just never ordered this large of a quantity of anything before, so I just like, the large box was very alarming to me. I was like, it cannot be that I ordered this many, but indeed, I did order that many. <laughs> For some reason, this hammy just turned out really dark. Look, I feel like my camera might be adjusting to make it look um, quite bright, but it's a lot darker than what I intended. But I do like my thank you card. I was really worried about the cut line and you can see the bottom of it. The very bottom, some of them um, are cut right perfectly, um, but just because like the irregularity of some machines, some of them aren't cut perfectly to the end, but it's not a huge deal and I hope people don't mind. It's also my thank you card, so no one's actually like paying for this piece in itself, so. I'm comforted by that fact. <laughs> Good morning, today is Tuesday. Yesterday I worked on packing some mail as well as my risograph print design. I think I have all the line work down and right now, today is the hard part, aka the coloring. I've never done riso before and I watch a lot of videos and I try to do my best to sort of learn about the process, but it's pretty confusing. Um, I kind of wish I took a workshop of some kind before I set off on this journey to make a bunch of prints on my own, but I think my, I have a understanding of how to format everything. It's just gonna be a bit tricky when I put everything into Photoshop. Basically, I'm pretty sure I just have to separate all the colors on different layers and then create grayscale Photoshop versions of each layer and that's what the machine will read as. And there's kind of tricks um, on how to do that on YouTube and stuff. So I'm gonna do my best and hopefully I can figure it out. I've been using Etsy since almost the beginning of like my whole shop career but I'm realizing like I really don't like a lot of features. Um, they recently did this star seller program, which I think is so dumb. They just grade you on a, a bunch of different arbitrary factors. And one of them is how fast you can get orders out. Um, which I think is also really stupid because not everyone can pack orders within one day. Like people have other things to do. They rolled out this new feature recently that I think is so dumb. Basically, if um, someone who orders from your shop placed an order over, I think $20, you have to add tracking. I have the option on Etsy that if you would like to upgrade your sticker mail to get tracking, I'll put it in like a mailer and I'll put the label on it and you'll be able to track it every step. Like you can do that, but it's just more expensive. When it comes to people who live really far away internationally, the tracked shipping turns from $2 to something like $16. So obviously people will more likely choose the non-tracked version just because it's more affordable for everybody involved and yeah i just love stamp mail i think it's a great option for people who still want to support my shop and don't want to pay like a really large amount for shipping fee but i was trying to check this order of somebody who ordered about 20 dollars worth of stickers and i couldn't check it off because it said you need to have tracking but obviously it doesn't have tracking so i just thought that was really really stupid i don't know i just feel like you're treating small business owners like amazon it just doesn't make sense i feel like every week i get this new reason why I don't like Etsy and I really want to move off the platform. I made my Shopify account and everything. I literally have StudioMeggie.com purchased. Um, I have the domain and I paid for a Shopify membership. 
I ran into trouble with those dang taxes again. <laughs> Shopify doesn't collect sales tax like Etsy does, and that's pretty much the only thing holding me onto this platform. The fact that Etsy will collect and remit sales tax for you saves me a lot of trouble. I know I could just like find a good accountant and they could sort that out for me and it would be okay, but it just seems like such a hassle to have to deal with like a bunch of sales tax stuff. Uh watch me work on my Risa design. Working on this was really really fun. I have never done this before like I previously mentioned so there was a pretty big learning curve. Um, I think it just took me a while to understand what I had to do first and foremost but I basically started out just by putting different colors on their own separate layers. So I would never use green and pink on the same layer. I still had multiple layers while I worked, but there were only pink layers and green layers. And then when I finished the piece, I combined them all into one pink layer and one green layer. And from there, I followed some really handy dandy YouTube tutorials on how to um, change all the layers into spa channels. And this is not something I'm familiar with at all. Um, but I, I had a really great time learning. Um, I don't really learn that many new things these days now that I'm not in school anymore. So it was really fun to really, I don't know, use a different part of my brain. And I just normally don't make art in this way where each color has to go on its, its individual layer. So um, it, it was really fun, I have to say. Very tedious, but fun. Um, and I, I chatted with some of my art friends and we were talking about going to some like local risograph workshop classes because they have those, which is really cool. Um, and I, I have really high hopes for how this print is going to look. I think risograph might look really, really cool with my style. So I definitely will be making more in the future. I don't even know what it's gonna look like yet, but I'm almost positive I will be making more in the future. And hopefully I will get to use a machine for myself and yeah, I'm really proud of myself because this is definitely something that's out of my comfort zone. It was something that really intimidated me, but I am not only really happy that I know more about the process, I know more about how the machine works, and I also feel like this design is pretty cute. <laughs> and I'm excited to like hang it up in my kitchen. So yeah, I hope you like the design as well. It's gonna be coming out in my October shop update and yeah. Today is Wednesday, so we're in the middle of the week. Yesterday, I finished up my Rizzo design. Um, it took me a while to figure out how to format everything, but I think it's all done and I can send it off today. Right now, I'm still talking to a few different printing presses. Um, at first, I emailed one and I thought, okay, like, I'm sure they should accept me. Um, I have like over a month of time, so I don't need it right away but they said they couldn't meet my deadline. So I reached out to like four more and they all got back to me saying, yeah, sure, we'll make it. So now I just have to sort of parse through the different presses and decide who I'm gonna go with. Also, I feel like I use the Patreon poll function really, really often just because it's just really nice to get a second opinion and my patrons are always so helpful and giving me suggestions. And yeah, it's just really nice to have like a little community to help me out with my art stuff. My patrons this morning, what kind of merch they typically like to shop for when they buy things from little art shops like mine. Um, I know personally, I love getting washi tape. Thought I had to make acrylic keychains because I thought they would be the most affordable for me to produce. Because when you talk to different manufacturers, a lot of them have very, very high minimum order quantities, aka MOQs, which is why a lot of artists that you see on Instagram, they will go they will go through a group order um, and then everyone will just place all of their orders together. So that way everyone can meet that minimum order quantity and it's just more affordable all around. So I was just always under the impression that like I couldn't really make washi tape by myself because I don't have a super big shop so I wouldn't be able to sell the quantity that 
I would have to get produced if that makes sense. But I found this website and the pricing per washi tape is actually really affordable. So I was just like, oh dang, I can make washi by myself. So I asked my patrons what kind of merch they prefer to get. And so far, I think that the one that is winning right now is washi tape. So the options I put were washi tape, acrylic charms, enamel pins, notepads, and washi tape is winning by a lot. I'm getting really excited about making all these manufactured stuff. At first, it was very, very nerve wracking. I think I talked about in my last video how I was very nervous to manufacture things because there's always that possibility that they won't sell and you kind of put a lot of money down and you might not get it back. Um, but I'm getting really excited about it. I feel like on one hand, I love making handmade goods because it feels very personal, but they are very time consuming and my wrist isn't fully healed. So, and because they're not handmade, I don't have to charge like 30 to $40 for each piece. Like I can charge five to $8 per washi tape roll. I just feel like it's gonna be more affordable for a lot of people to pick up a manufactured item versus a handmade item. At first I was just like, oh, I could do a, a little twist on the earrings that I sell really well on, um, the house one, and have someone like going home and the house, maybe like a little neighborhood vibe. So it's more like a story landscape t design. And then I was like, plants are really cute. Maybe I could draw a different, a bunch of different kinds of plants and put some sparkles. And then I thought about froggies and I have a print I really like in my shop called my froggy community print. And I was just like, oh, I feel like that'd be a really cute washi design. So I'm going to go with this one. I feel like people will like this the most. A very thorough step-by-step -step guide on how to work with different types of clay. I myself learned a lot from her video on sculpting air dry clay, as you guys may have seen. And I also learned a new tip on how to introduce texture into my sculpture. My shop clay gives a half so if my camera decides to focus, here we go. This is what the washi is going to look like. Um, yeah, let me zoom in a little bit more. You can get that high quality look at it. It took me a bit, but I think I figured out how it can be like seamless and I added bleed. So hopefully nothing's going to get cut off. I did a little Q&A on my Instagram yesterday and I got a lot of questions about YouTube in general and I answered them on Instagram, but I thought I would just chat about it just because Maybe other people who didn't see those stories might find it also interesting. So one question I got was, do I have to show my face if I want to start on a YouTube channel? And I thought that was an interesting question because when I was first starting myself like a year ago, I also was thinking about this a lot. I didn't want to show my face. I think it was just like a privacy thing and I was really scared to like put myself out there. And I think there was like the big shame factor of like the whole idea that anybody can watch it. So like you're, lab partner from eighth grade could go on to youtube.com and watch you and like make fun of you or something like that you know which is so dumb to think about but i think there are those like inhibitions and fear when it comes to making youtube videos just like people in your personal life can judge you um i just graduated and i was like oh my god my classmates from college might see this but eventually i decided what the hell i'm gonna just start talking on camera um i think i decided that after making like two or three videos for me because i was starting from scratch like i didn't really have an Instagram audience to sort of show my videos to and be like, hey, come check out my YouTube channel. Like I was starting from like very low numbers on all of my social platforms. I kind of just felt like if I showed my face, it would be a bit easier to connect with people. And I also thought of the YouTubers I looked up to. Those two individuals remain like Jisoo and Tiffany or Jisoo Pete and Apple Cheeks. Like I really liked their videos and I was just like, I want to make content like them. And they both you know, speak on camera. And I think it has really paid off. I feel like although my numbers aren't, may not be as high as a lot of like my peers in this space, um, I'm really proud of what I've accomplished. And starting out on YouTube is no easy task. Um, and I do think that the fact that I've like kind of showed my face and put myself out there and been vulnerable. I think I would have like the patrons I have today or have made the shop sales that I've had um, without, you know, showing this <laughs> on YouTube. But I don't think you have to, um, mainly because I think of YouTubers like Love Soup. I really enjoy watching um, her videos. They're so fun and she lives in Japan. So there's like, it's just like really good vibes. And she always like is making like cute coffees and little biscuits. I'm always like, ooh. Um, so I really like watching her videos and she doesn't show her face. You can also just like film like, like this. <laughs> you can be like, hey, here we go. Hey guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> or like you can just do voiceovers and stuff. So just in general, if you want to start a YouTube channel and you don't really know where to start, I would say just make your first video. Like it doesn't have to be good. You just have to film it. And I feel like once I did my first one, it started snowballing and every video after that, I started learning a lot more. Like, the more you do it, just like the better you'll get at it. And huge point here is that the more you do it, I think the less inhibitions you have and the easier it is to talk on camera. I feel like the more videos I make, the less of a shit I get. All my my fear and shame of like, oh, everyone can see me. I feel like I just started giving less of a shit and I was like, okay, they can watch me. That counts as a view, haha. <laughs> Even if people judge me, like whatever, like I'm enjoying myself, I'm meeting people, but the growth, I think, for me at least on YouTube has been so much slower compared to Instagram and even TikTok. In the beginning, I was getting paid for the work I was doing. I felt like no one was watching me. So it was definitely like probably one of the hardest social media experiences I've had. I guess what I'm trying to say is also like, don't feel like you have to make YouTube videos. I don't know if that makes sense. Like if you enjoy making art, like you don't have to film it. Um, just because you see like a lot of other people doing it, it's really not for everybody. And when I was first starting out, I was like, this looks amazingly fun. And then I was just like, oh shit, I gotta edit this for like 20 hours and not get paid for it at all. And like, yeah. <laughs> So I'm just saying like if you enjoy it go for it like it, it's I've enjoyed my experience But don't feel like you have to just because like you post your art on Instagram and so on and so forth Like definitely don't feel like you need to make YouTube videos to find success as an artist online I think my Rizzo design is finally formatted correctly. I watched a YouTube video by Resolve Studio and it was very, very helpful in helping me change all of my layers into spot channels, which I did not know how to do, but now I do, which is pretty, pretty rad. so dramatic. It's artsy. Look at this. <laughs> Wait. It's <laughs> very dramatic. He said. <laughs> um, I just can't believe I printed all these labels so quickly. I don't have to cut anything out and I don't have to take tape and stick anything. Like it's wonderful. Stick it off like this and slap it onto the mailer. Oh my God. Oh my, that is so easy. I'm like, why am I emotional? <laughs> it just took me so long to make this purchase. I knew the label printer would make my life easier, but I just like didn't want to make the jump just because this was, I think altogether like 180 to $200 for everything. Um, so it's not cheap by any means, but printers tend to be that kind of price in general. But I was just like, oh, I can't afford it right now. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But bro, thank God I did. <laughs> I do feel like I'm having way too much fun with this label printer, but you have to understand 
Before I got this label printer, I had done over a year running my shop with just printing it out, cutting it out, and using tape to stick everything down. And it doesn't sound too bad, but when I had a really large volume of orders, it was just so annoying and irritating. Um, and it just didn't feel good that I had to like put take out like four little pieces of tape for every single label and I always be worried it would come off and it also didn't feel good that I was using a lot of ink and a lot of plastic um, but this is a thermal printer which is super cool and it's good to invest in myself in my shop and yeah that's all I have to say um, Wait, does he just eat? Oh, wait. So. We just ate pizza. It's 9 31 p.m. on a Wednesday. For the listeners, miss. So, fun fact, before I started working on these tulip paintings you see here, I was working on one of Tiffany, aka Apple Cheeks, Cheektober prompts, which was um, Apple People. And for some reason, the day before um, you see me working on these, I was just not feeling it. I started off in a good mood and I was experimenting with acrylic inks for the first time because over the weekend I went to Blick and picked up some fun new art supplies. So I was just like, it's Inktober, it's time to experiment and learn new things. And I'd never used acrylic ink before and I see um, Sean from Peach, Very Little Peach working with acrylic inks all the time and it just seems so fun. and. Yeah, I was working with it and it was going well, but then, you know, good turn to bad, turn to disaster, and I'm just being so dramatic, but it just didn't turn out how I wanted to, and I think I was just in a really bad mood that day, and I don't know if you also feel like this, but sometimes when I'm not in a good mood and the art isn't really looking a certain type of way, it just like, it just makes this really negative feedback cycle and it just gets worse and worse, but the next day, um, I was looking at the piece I was working on that I was so unhappy with and I was just like, this looks fine. <laughs> I mean, it's not my best work, but it's not bad at all. And I made a comic about this recently, but I honestly think a huge part of how I feel about my art on any given day is just almost always a direct reflection of how I feel about myself. So if I don't really like myself very much that day, I'm just not going to like my art. Um, and yeah, it, it's a journey, you know? Self-love, she's hard. <laughs> but yeah, I. the next day though, I'm, I'm really glad I stopped working on it. I think I worked on it a bit too long, that little cursed apple painting. Um, I will definitely be trying that again because I love the prompt. I think it's adorable. I just think the specific piece I was working on, just it's got bad vibes on it now. <laughs> but um, I don't know, the next day I felt great and I was working on these tulip paintings and things just really flowed and I don't think the tulips versus the apple painting are that different in style or skill or anything like there's no huge differences between them and what I was doing in my approach I just think it's like I was just feeling better about myself on this day and yeah I just thought I would share that because I don't know I was really happy with how these came out and I think it was a bit of a learning lesson for me too it's just like if you're not feeling good about yourself, one, we have to work on that, <laughs> but also it's okay to just stop making the art. And I think sometimes I force myself to sort of push through it and see it through and it, it's not always the best decision. Um, but I really, really love these little tulip guys. I made these for my patrons. They are Patreon originals. Um, I've been realizing I don't always work the smartest. I work hard, but I don't always work smart. And I will make a lot of individual art pieces um, when they could be combined. That doesn't make any sense. What I mean is like, if I have multiple things to paint, I'll have Patreon originals to paint, I'll have to design a print for my shop, I'll have to um, work on Inktober paintings, for example. I will make individual pieces of work for every single thing instead of, you know, thinking a little smart and being like, why don't I just make Inktober pieces and make those my Patreon originals? Like, make less art. You know, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> um, so these are going to be little uploads for the Peachtober day one, which is Tulip. And I'm also going to send them out to three of my lovely patrons who are in my originals here. And I really, really hope they like it. 
I'm always a bit nervous when I make these page front originals just because, you know, people are paying a little bit more, so I always want to make sure I'm making things that are the best of my ability just because, you know, they're paying a pretty high price for these babies. <laughs> um, and yeah, they're for Inktober, which I haven't talked about in this video yet. I think I talked about it a little bit, but I want to talk about it a bit more. Um, I was very nervous for Inktober for some reason. I don't know why. I think I just saw some of my art friends prepping for it and like buying supplies and people making a lot of stuff in advance. And I think I was just like, oh shit, is everyone else doing this? Should I be doing this? But obviously like you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. And um, I put out a little poll the other day asking if people were participating in Inktober. And I know a lot of the people who follow me are all artists. And the percentage was pretty shocking to me. I thought more people would participate than not. I think it was like 60-40, almost 50-50. Um, and that just goes to show, you know, social media is a big old lie. <laughs> and not everyone is participating in Inktober, which I think is super understandable. It's a lot of pressure to do these challenges. Um, and yeah, I, I will be participating myself, but I think I'm going to try to aim for like 10 pieces. I really don't want to try to make something every day because I know myself and I know that's just not realistic to my work schedule and I don't think that's going to help me learn. Um, and yeah, I think my biggest goal for this month is to, yes, of course, experiment, to make new pieces, to uh, discover new artists, but it's also just to be kinder to myself and to my artwork and yeah, I just want to be more forgiving um, in how I perceive my art and how I perceive myself, as cheesy as that sounds. Cause like I mentioned before, I really do think uh, how I feel about my art is a pretty big reflection of me. So I wanna be accepting of whatever I create. So I think I'm done for the day. I did three originals, which I didn't expect to complete, but I did, so I'm really proud of myself. I also think this will probably be it for this video. I feel like I did a lot in this video. Um, sorry, I'm a little hyped up on the caffeine from the boba. <laughs> this happens every time I get boba and I just like, I never learn my lesson. I always get like really hyped up. Um, I think it's just like the mix of the sugar and the black tea and I'm just like, anyways. <laughs> I hope you liked this video. I had a great time filming it. Thank you for hanging out with me so long. If you made it to the end of the video, congratulations. It's a lot of watching me. So I appreciate you very much. Um, and yeah, I'll see you in my next one, which will be in about two weeks time. I'm actually going to be going on vacation, um, in the middle of October. So yeah, the second, the second week of October, I'm going to be going on a little vacation. So there will be no video out that week, but I'll see you either next week or in two weeks. Yeah. Um, bye.